So I just read uh, at the beginning from Exodus chapters uh, 11 and 12, which is where God destroys Egypt uh, with the plague, the last plague, which is where the firstborn in each household dies. And he tells them to put the blood on top of the doorposts, right? And on the doorposts and on the lintels, right? And we, we know that this means that Christ, Christ's blood is also upon us. The, the blood of the Lamb that was given up is a symbol that foretells of the giving up of Jesus Christ in our place, whose blood was shed on our behalf. And when God saw the blood, He passed over that house and did not destroy anybody in that house. In the same way, for us, if Christ died for us, God sees the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God, shed in our place and does not destroy us and send us to the lake of fire or judge us for our sins. He does not send us to hell because He sees the blood of Christ that was shed in our place. But we must ask ourselves, who did Christ die for? Did He die for every single person who ever lived in the history of the world? Or did He die only for His elect people who come to faith in Him? Well, let us think for a few moments. What if we take this example of Egypt? What if even the Egyptians, they all had blood on top of their house, on the, of their doorposts and on their, on their doorposts and the lintels, and yet God still destroyed the, the firstborn son of each house? What would we say concerning the Word of God, which said that He would pass over that house? Can the word of God be broken? May it never be. It cannot be. And in the same way, if God's, if the blood of the Son of God, of Christ Himself, was shed in our place, then the promise of God cannot be broken. He cannot overlook the blood of Christ shed on our behalf to destroy us. And so if we say that it was for the whole world, and yet He doesn't save the whole world, then what does that say about the power of the blood of Christ? Was it insufficient? No, my friends. It was not insufficient. It accomplished what it set out to do, which is why we must conclude that Christ gave His life only for His elect people, which he, whom He formed before the foundation of the world, gave His blood on their behalf, and saved them, saved them eternally. And they cannot be lost. They cannot by any possibility be lost. They are saved. And that, the power of Christ's shed blood cannot be broken. But then how do we know who these elect people are? Well, the question is, do you believe? Because if you believe, it's because the power of God has changed your heart. The Holy Spirit has come and changed your heart. Because as Romans chapter 3 says, there's not one righteous, there's not one who seeks for God. If God had not worked in you, you would not believe today. But is your faith a true faith? Because if God does not chastise you for your sins, if there's no chastisement and you're just left to wander in this world of sin, then you're not a child of God. Because the scripture says that God disciplines those whom He loves. But if you really believe in Jesus Christ, then the reason you believe is because Christ died for you. And the Holy Spirit has come and change your heart. He has given you the knowledge of His Word through means that He has predetermined. And that is why you believe. You do not believe because God foreknew that you would believe. Uh, Christ did not die for you because He foreknew that one day you would believe. But rather you believe because He died for you. And God foreknew that you would believe because He has predetermined it. 
because he chose you before the world was made. And so, in this day, we celebrate the death and resurrection of our Lord. And we know we are in the midst of so much death and destruction in this country and in the world. But if I take you back to history in the days of Martin Luther, about 500 years ago, there were much worse plagues than we see today. In all honesty, the only worse thing that we have today is abortion. But every other disease, nothing comes close to the black plague that afflicted Europe, where a third of the whole population died, or more in some places. And because of that, there was a saying. They used to say, in the midst of death, uh, sorry, in the midst of life, we die. But what Martin Luther said, he gave, he, 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 he preached on Abraham, the death of, he was about to kill his son, in obedience to God. And he says, there's no such obedience in the whole world except in Jesus Christ. And we know that this was to another figure that which foretold, which is a symbol that foretells of Jesus Christ, who would be our true sacrifice in our behalf. And he says, you see how, even in the midst of death, God's glory is revealed. And so the saying was, in the midst of life we die. But Martin Luther reversed that and said, no. In the midst of death, we live. And it is the same for us today. Christ rose again, therefore we live. We have eternal life, not temporal life through faith. And so let us celebrate with gladness, with courage, and not in fear.